Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. As a part of this tutorial, we are getting into the next chapter that is chapter three talking about the reviews. And this chapter will consist of a lot of important topics from the review point of view, which a manager should be considered about. Now, number one, today we are covering 3.1 introduction and we will just get started with some of the brush up from the foundation level syllabus. Well, just to quickly recall that what we have covered as a part of the foundation, we remember that we spoke about static testing, what exactly static testing is all about, the difference between static and dynamic testing. And of course, we also understood how static testing will be different from static analysis, which is specific to the code. And uh, getting into the review process, we understood about the formal review process, how exactly it is conducted, what are the standard rules of the review. And then we understood the four different types of review as a part of the foundation level. Now here we are going to continue further and ahead and understand that what exactly a test manager should be responsible for when it comes to the reviews. But before that, a quick introduction, getting started here. You know, since reviews are a form of static testing, the test managers may be responsible for their overall success, particularly with respect to the tester, testware products. Now, in the wider context of software project, however, this responsibly should be a matter of organization policy. Now, you see that being a review holder or being responsible for the conduction and organizing the review within your organization, you are responsible for making sure that it is successful. Now, because uh, we do remember from foundation, we had two important factors. Number one was organization factors and people factors. So the two people are manager and the reviewer. So manager has a complete reliability on planning certain things, making sure that the review is adequately planned, right people are involved in the review, and what kind of product is under the review, so what type of review should be conducted for that. So a lot many such things will be involved here, and thus test manager need to play a very complicated role here to make sure that whenever we conduct this, it should meet the expectations at the end of the day. Given the possible widespread application of formal reviews across many disciplines, both before and within software projects, the responsible party may be a test manager or a quality assurance manager or a review that is a trained review coordinator. In this syllabus, the possible responsible party, whosoever it is, is referred to as review leader. So if you're remembering from the foundation, uh, review leader is an important role in the foundation level formal review process. And uh, this is where we are referring this person, person like test manager or quality assurance manager or uh, review coordinator as review leader. Now the review leader should ensure that an environment exists that is conductive to the implementation of success factors. In addition, the review leader should devise a measurement plan to ensure that the reviews provide effective values. Now that's where I think the major responsibilities of the test manager are that making sure that well it is well organized at the right point with adequate notice to the participants because if in case you don't inform the people, they may not be available or they may not be able to contribute effectively to your process. So being a task manager or review leader here at this point of time, you need to have everything in context or consideration. Number one, of course, who are the people who are participating? Have you informed them earlier in advance so that they can prepare for it? And at the same time, number of document, the part of the document which is in the review is complete or in terms of like it is auditable that you can review it and many such factors to make that successful. So must have a well-defined plan to make the review process successful. Participants in the review should have review training to better understand their respective roles in any review process. All review participants must be committed to the benefits of a well-conducted review. So just not alone test manager can do, of course we can train the participants because we do have equal contribution from the participants to contribute to the review. Without them, the review cannot be successful alone by contributions from the test manager. So uh, making sure how can you get that done? Of course, you will help the reviewers to be trained on understanding that what exactly a review process is, how exactly it is conducted, what will be your contribution? why we are conducting this review process when you're contributing, does that add any value or not? So doing that will definitely make your reviewers more interested and more contributing towards conducting the review. 
When done properly, reviews are single biggest and most cost effective contributor to overall delivered quality because that helps you to identify defects much earlier in the life cycle. Static testing, it is about prevention of defects or early testing of an application, which is from the point of static work products. But of course, there are a lot of work products in any organization which have defects much earlier in the life cycle. If you don't conduct static testing or if in case you conduct but it is not effective, that's where the defect gets leaked to the dynamic testing. So thus it is a paramount that uh, importance that the review leaders are able to implement efficient reviews in their projects and demonstrate the benefit of these reviews. Well, continuing ahead, we are talking about what exactly could be the possible def uh, review processes which you can have within. This is not, we are not talking about the foundation level types of review. What documentation or what specific reviews you can have for different work products. For example, possible reviews within a project can include contractual reviews, which is all about the contracts which you have. So initiated at the project inception itself and at major project milestones. That contract is something which you have signed with your customer and that sets a lot of objective and goals for your entire project and does include the testing point of view. That what we are expecting to deliver as a part of the testing. So in initially, when the moment the uh, project is initiated, that time you will conduct a review on the contract. And it's just not a one-time activity. Every milestone when you complete or you complete a particular stage, like design, coding, or something like that, you do review the contract again to measure that how well you met the expectations or is there anything else you need to do. Requirements review, of course, that we know from the foundation that requirements will be analyzed in order to check for any kind of inconsistencies, anomalies, any kind of contradictions which you may not be understanding or incomplete information and you report to the author for uh, remaining details. Similarly, going with the high level design and low level design, both are reviewable. So no matter what design do you create, be it a high level design or low level design, it will be reviewed for any kind of issues or defects much earlier in the life cycle. In fact, the other one is code review. So code review is also a static object which is initially created. Then we run that as a part of the dynamic testing. But before that, a static review process can happen for code as well, which will be scenarios and dry run approach. And uh, we won't be executing the code, but we will be reviewing that. And that can be done with help of the tools. And that's what you call as static analysis uh, of the code. Test work product reviews, including all the test work products, whatever you may have in your process, must be reviewed before you make use of it, including the test plan, strategy, uh, the test cases, test data, test conditions, whatever, even the test script and the test cases, whatever you write, must be reviewed before execution or making further use of it. Test entry reviews, that is from the point of entry and exit criteria. These are also very standard and important documentations to determine when to start testing lifecycle and stop testing. So if in case these are having any kind of ambiguities could be uh, leading you or uh, probably I can say it will be misleading you to a different direction. So make sure that you do review your entry and exit criteria. And at the end, of course, acceptance reviews used to obtain customer or stakeholders approval for a system, which will definitely acknowledge if the finally the customer has accepted your product or if no, on what grounds you need to rework on the product in order to make that achievable. But that's all we have already known from the foundation level. That's something not new, but we are just giving a proper name to it. In advanced level syllabus in test manager certification here, you will be adding more from the test manager point of view that what exactly management reviews are and audits are, which are definitely a test manager cup of tea and he has to participate, or he or she has to participate in these contributions and conduct or probably get involved and contribute in the management reviews for making decisions and audits to make sure that did you meet the overall governance criteria of IT or not. Well, that was a quick introduction about 3.1 in the third chapter reviews. We will be continuing ahead with the next tutorial in the upcoming sessions. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to answer your queries and address them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.